After months of searching, you finally did it. You finally made your money, you finally got your finances in order, and guess what? You're ready to buy your first home. And I wanna say, first of all, congratulations on that step, big step, and an exciting one at that. But I wanna let you know, the market is very competitive. And in this video today, I wanna give you some strategies, uh, five strategies that you can do to win your next bidding on your next home. So this is very important in any market, and uh, I wanna share a few tips with you. Hi, my name is Nikita Pavlov, I'm with Westbrook Realty, and without further ado, let's get into the video today. Strategy number one, you gotta have your pre-approval letter. What does that mean? Okay, what does that mean is you need to have a pre-approval lender, pre-approval letter, excuse me, from your lender that signifies that you can borrow and pay for the house that you're going to go for. So essentially this letter will show the listing agent that you know if that the loan amount you're borrowing from the bank that you can do. So if you're pre-approved for like 1.5 million, you have a pre-approval letter from your from your lender from your bank, whether it be Wells Fargo, Bank of America, whatever it is, and it'll say on that letter, you know, pre-approved for 1.5 million, name, you know, your name essentially, and from that letter you take that and then you kind of you know you make your search list of all the properties to potentially possibly go to that pre-approval amount. So sometimes like in this market here in California, Bay Area, it's crazy. Sometimes buyers have to max out their pre-approval letters, uh, their, their whole amount that, they're, that they're, the, uh, they're getting loaned because the market is so competitive and you gotta just go your highest and best sometimes. So that's number one is getting your pre-approval letter from your lender, making sure you're, you know, go through all the steps to get that. And before you even start looking for a house or, you know, looking forward to buying a house. So that's step number one right there. Strategy number two, make your highest offer. Now in real estate, when you're buying a home, uh, you know, there's many things that go into it, but you, you know, money is the biggest factor that the sellers are looking for most of the time, like 99% of the time. You know, the more money you give, the better your chances are gonna be. And the higher your offer is, the more, you know, you will be looked at uh, to win the home. Now, you know, this can be done in many ways. Uh, you know, you, you can find a property that's on the lower side of your budget and, you know, bid on the uh, higher end. So if like your budget is 1.4 million, you want to look at houses for like 1.2 million so you could, you know, put offers at 1.3, 1.35 like 100 to 150K over asking if you need be, and uh, you know, try to win the house that way. However, depending on what market you're in, like for example, Bay Area, where we are located, sometimes houses go two to three to 400,000 over asking, sometimes even more than that. We've heard stories of houses going 800K over asking. So you wanna be prepared, you know, even if you do submit your highest offer, that chances are sometimes, depending on where you are, it may also not get accepted. So that being said, uh, it's still a good strategy to put your highest and best on the line when buying your first home. Strategy number three, waive your contingencies. Contingencies are important when putting an offer. There's actually three. There is appraisal contingency, loan contingency, and inspection contingency. Now these contingencies could save your EMD and if there's something that you don't like when you're under contract, for example, you have an inspection contingency on a contract, on a property, you find something in the inspection that you do not like, you can back out of that contract without losing any of your 3% earnest money deposit and move on forward. However, in a competitive seller's market, I mean, excuse me, buyer's market, where buyers are really aggressive and trying to win homes, you know, it's very important that uh, you try not to put contingencies under contract. The reason I say this is because, yes, it, though it may be risky, um, you stand to uh, potentially lose your deal. It won't be what's called a clean offer. So if you put a, you know, high price on an offer, for a property, but let's just say you have two contingencies or one contingency and another buyer comes in with a one slightly lower, but theirs is a clean offer, no contingencies. They may have actually a better chance because they have no contingencies. So the seller just may pick them over you. But I want to do, I want to say this 
is be careful when you're choosing to remove contingencies and to put contingencies. Because in certain cases, uh, when you put an offer that may be a little bit too high over the comparables around the, the subject property, it may not appraise for that number. So if you're, if, if the, the property is listed for 960K and you put a $1.15 million offer, but the property really, you know, is, is appraised for about a million, you know, that's $150,000 you need to come up with uh, in, for that difference in the loan that your bank is giving you. So really be careful uh, when you're putting these appraisals on. Make sure that if you are working with your realtor that he is aware of the comparables in the area and that you're smart in making your offer. But waiving your contingencies will always be a better way for you to kind of stand out and get your offer hopefully accepted when you're purchasing your first home. Strategy number four, pay in cash. Now, I understand that's kind of a broad statement. A lot of people don't have, you know, a million dollars cash, half a million dollars cash, $200,000 cash just lying around there to buy a home or anything like that. That's why a lot of people go to financing and buy their home doing that, which is totally understandable. Many people do this, um, but, you know, cash offers are, you know, they get accepted better than someone who is potentially financing with 10 or 20% down with a loan. Um, that being said, cash is king. You know, there's a reason why they say cash is king. Uh, because without a cash, there is no risks. The seller doesn't have to take risks with the buyers buying the property in cash. Uh, and the buyer wants to close quickly. So if you're one of those lucky buyers out there that do have cash on hand to buy your first home, I really highly recommend you, do, you, you really take the opportunity and understand what are your benefits of going with a loan, borrowing money from a bank, and what are your benefits of really going and buying cash? If you're someone who can buy cash, I would suggest, suggest possibly doing it that way if it's a home you want to win. But, you know, if you want to finance to not drop all your cash into, you know, a house, that's totally understandable. Uh, you, you know, you could still win the house financing, but if you do have cash, I highly suggest going it with the cash and buying it your dream home or property with cash. You'll have a much, much better way, uh, time beating out the competition that is financing and you may be the one to win. Cash offers do end up winning in the market much more uh, enticingly than offers that are being financed. So that's number four, tip number four for me right there. And tip number five, get personal. What does that mean? Well, let me explain. The real estate market is competitive and you need to have strategy and stand out. Well, one of the ways you can stand out in this market, especially when you're putting in offers to win your home, is by getting personal with the sellers. Well, let me explain what that means more in depth. So let's just suppose I'm representing my buyers and they wanna buy a home. Well, you know, it really depends, but my buyers can write a nice little cover letter uh, to the sellers, maybe make them a little nice card, maybe even go as far as buying them a gift of appreciation to show how much they love the house and how much they want to grow, see their family in it thriving, that they really, really want the house. Now, though that is a way to stand out and could be a potential way for you to acquire your dream home without uh, and beating out a lot of the competition, it depends on the sellers too, because you know, if the seller is an investor, or the seller doesn't have a lot of emotions toward the buyers, then you may have, uh, you may struggle using that technique. However, um, it is a way uh, to do, um, to win an offer. And I would suggest doing it regardlessly because the thing is it's like a 50-50 chance. The seller could be a, you know, a cold hearted investor who doesn't care about any video cover letters or anything like that. He just wants the money, the best deal, or you could find yourself lucky and going with a seller who is a, you know, wants a nice family in the house, loves the house, wants the next buyer to love the house just as much as they love the house living there all those years. So your offer could actually win, even if it's not the highest. If you go that extra route to ensure how much you're, you care for the house, you just might win the offer. I've had many situations, uh, well, I just started this business not too long ago, but I've already done transactions where 
uh, we have beat out certain competition in this market just by doing these little steps like that where we make personal connections with the seller and create that bond you know because at the end of the day you know you're buying a, your buyers are buying their home and the sellers are selling their home it's an emotional thing like it or not at the end of the day it is um, and it's, an, it's a good way to stand out with, uh, with little cover letters you know little videos gifts like that so that's my uh, tip number five as far as getting your bid accepted over all the other bids for the houses. I hope you guys liked this video today and I hope I shared some knowledge uh, with you guys to help you out in any way, any agents watching this or buyers that are looking to hire an agent to go and uh, you know have these strategies in place to win your home. Um, definitely. Uh, check out some more videos on this channel. We have plenty more lots of content and more content coming your way So if you could just like that like button and subscribe to the channel We'd greatly appreciate it here at Westbrook Realty again. My name is Nikita Pavlov, and I hope you enjoyed this video I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye. Bye